Welcome to Dinner with Dr. Brian. I am your host. I am inviting you personally to sit at the table with some of my most intriguing and arresting guests who are going to help you lose your appetite or gain a hunger for more information. We're going to go to some of the best restaurants in the area and dine with some of the greatest chefs this side of the Chesapeake Bay. I dare you. Tune in, don't touch the dial, and watch and see what's going to happen. Every time we come to the table, you're going to hunger for so much more. Every time you turn on and see us here, it's dinner with Dr. Brian, and you are my special guest. Welcome to Dinner with Dr. Bryant. Tonight we are live from Hyattsville, Maryland at Carolina Kitchen. We're going to be talking about a very critical issue that is in fact a kitchen sink issue is now at the dinner table. All of America found itself raptured in attention seeing Occupy Wall Street as it has evolved to become a national phenomenon to demand that there would be economic equity across the country. My guests who are with me on tonight are going to be talking about Occupy not just Wall Street, but Main Street. Glad to have with me Joy uh, from Baltimore, formerly Mount Vernon, but now, what is it called? It's now called Station North. Station North. Uh, Kevin, uh, who is from Occupy DC, uh, is here with us. He dipped through the beltway to come. Uh, State Senator, Pastor, Reverend Doctor, soon to be Senator, uh, C. Anthony Muse, we're glad to have you, as well as uh, Mike from Occupy uh, Baltimore. I want to jump right in before we jump into food uh, and ask you, uh, Joy, a very critical question uh, that has really resonated is that while we're flipping through and seeing Occupy, uh, occupy the country and occupy the news every night, rarely do we ever see uh, black people occupy. Uh, and you have been a, a, a staunch uh, supporter almost through the whole process. Uh, one, why? Uh, and two, why do you think my, more minorities are not involved? Um, I think it's, it's twofold. So I think it's culturally, uh, we don't feel accepted as African Americans to be a part of uh, any sort of movement that's semi-radical. Um, the only non-example would be the, the civil rights movement. Yes. So that's kind of what we have culturally to look to. So anything a little bit different from that is a little bit, um, I think it comes off as aggressive. Second fold is, uh, I guess there hasn't been too much uh, promotion in African American community, so it's twofold. Yes. So you have this cultural reason and, the, and another reason, which is, you know, we haven't really been embracing African American community yet. Yes. I, I want to ask you, Kevin, uh, the question that the business community is asking, uh, and a lot of conservatives uh, from the armchair of their living room are bemoaning, what in the world does Occupy want? Uh, <laughs> we're seeing them protest squat, set up tents, what is it that Occupy is really after? And what would Occupy consider victory? Well, I think victory is a long way away because what we want is pretty big. Uh, you know, Cornell West, when he spoke at Occupy Washington, D.C. on Freedom Plaza, he said we were a continuation of Martin, Dr. Martin Luther King's poverty, anti-poverty campaign, that we were Resurrection City resurrected. Resurrection City was the last real Occupy of Washington, D.C. Uh, back just after Dr. King was, was murdered. Uh, and so what we want to see is uh, an end to the wealth divide. We want to see an end to corporate rule and power shifted to the people. Right now we have the rule of money in Washington, D.C. and throughout the country, at the local level as well. We need to move to the rule of the people. So, Senator Muse, you really stand in two different fields at the same time as being a uh, a pastor in Prince George's County as well as a state senator uh, representing the people uh, in the, uh, the incubator of the civil rights movement which is the black church and then the other side of it being an elected official and now moving uh, potentially towards the U.S. Senate. What do you think is the government's role or has capitalism taken the place of democracy? I think in many ways one of the cries that we're hearing from persons is that what you've said is exactly what's happening. Capitalism has taken really precedent over people. From the governmental role, what you have, you simply have politics over people, meaning those who support, those who pay their money, those who put politicians in office seem to be those that most politicians will listen. Yes. 
And I think what people are calling for is for something to be to happen that's just the opposite. They're calling for government to reflect the people yes. rather than government adding on and becoming a voice of those, that 1% who are in power. Government must go back and remember that their call is to the voice, is to be voices for the voiceless. Yes. And when you talk about what's happening in the long term, you're talking about a systemic problem. Because right. you're talking about 50% of our kids in Prince George's County not graduating. You're talking about 70% in Baltimore not graduating. So you're further now having a divide between the haves and have nots. Government must set in place those uh, regulations, for example, curriculum when it comes to education. Uh, we got, we've got to look at jobs and what we've done to send them all overseas and not do anything here and allow 1% to control the job market. Uh, wages, living wages, uh, livable wages. Government has a major role to play here if we if we are determined to do the right thing and to have people, not a political party, and people and not uh, financing, you know, not those 1% financing, right. finance, uh, you know, elected officials. When we go back to hear the cries of the people, the government will do the right thing. Right now, we're not. Well, a critical question I want to act as an advocate. Uh, I, I've heard from some affluent uh, people who uh, cry uh, that the Occupy movement uh, really is an underground railroad for socialism uh, and it's anti-success. Uh, are the people who are successful, should they then just be giving their money away? And then the, the third tier of that is are we telling our children not to aspire to be fiscally successful? What is the underground uh, message uh, that we're really saying in this America which is the land of opportunity? Should, in fact, we make the people who have become success feel sorrowful about their success, any not. of you? No, of course not. I mean, in fact, I think what, just by the fact that we're occupying public space, you begin to get the message. We see that there is a commonwealth, a commonwealth that we all share. Bill Gates, for example, the richest person in the world, would not be the richest person in the world in 1750, in 1850, and even 1950, because he built on the commonwealth of the technology that we all built together as a society. And so what we want to see is that commonwealth shared. Uh, not that people who uh, succeed in life don't get a benefit financially from it, right. but we want to see some balance in that. You know, the most successful decade for building the middle class and for a lot of millionaires to be developing too was the 1950s. And the, the top tax rate in that era was 91%. I need you to hold that okay. thought. It's an amazing thing how we define poverty in America because yes. you can be in poverty and have cable. So please stay <laughs> tuned. I will have more discussion with dinner with Dr. Bryant. The best is yet to come. Call somebody, text somebody, Twitter somebody. Tell them we're occupying cable right now. Welcome back to dinner with Dr. Bryant. You are now embroiled in a full throttle discussion on Occupy Wall Street. Has it gone too far or is it not going far enough? My guests who represent all different aspects of Occupy, we've got a representative, a lawyer, a lobbyist, an activist, and all of us are hungry. Critical question I want to ask you, when is this going to be over? That's what the mayors are asking across, <laughs> across the country. Police departments are asking this. Mm -hmm. I mean, you all are going to do this for how long? Mm -hmm. I, I think rather than asking that question, I think that's the wrong question. The question they should be asking is how do we help mm -hmm. to bring about equity? How do we help to listen? Because part of the government's job is to listen to people. It's not just to have them go down there and holler and we say, great, we're going to let you holler and when it's all over. Because whether the hollering stops or not, the problems are the same. What people are asking for is simply a fair shot at the American dream. That's not what we have today. What people are asking for is a fair shot at income, health care. They're asking, for home. They're asking for a fair shot at home, and that's not what they but get. Newt, Newt Gingrich said a couple of weeks ago, and I hate quoting him, uh, but he, <laughs> he said as a, as a prime Republican candidate, uh, that they've had a shot that most of the people who are bemoaning don't have work examples, don't have a drive mm -hmm. uh, towards employment, and are just looking for a handout uh, from the system and, and from the government. Uh, that's, not, that's not accurate at all. I, mean, I think that's a false caricature. Uh, I'm a lawyer. If I wanted to be making money, I could be doing that. I think it's more important to get this country on track. In fact, I know people who have put their careers aside 
not just me, uh, but many others who have said this is such an important transformational moment to get things right in this country. We've been off track for decades. Corporate power has been building its uh, strength up for decades. We have a lot to undo and get back on track. So we think this is a critically important thing. This is what citizens is supposed to do. Yeah. In order to form a more perfect union, that's our job. Here's the fundamental bottom line on organizational structure, anti-democratic in so much as there's never been a movement in America without a leader. Uh, and Occupy Wall Street is promoting a horizontal that is all the people speak mm -hmm. uh, without any spokesperson. Is that really American mm -hmm. that you're making this advance and what would be the Democratic Party with it without the chair of the Democratic Committee? Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I would argue that we didn't start with the president. That was that was an idea that we came with over time. So I think that we we can learn to grow and shift. I think that we have a culture here that in the U.S. and I think that it's worked so far. Maybe you know not so much in the last few decades, but that we can be progressive and change over time. That 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 is a possibility. We haven't really enacted our right for progression. Um, we're doing it now. I think is this is the time to do it. This I is think we're at a great a great now. moment in history where we're going from the kind of representative democracy we've had to a participatory democracy. We're seeing it in the media, where people are creating their own media. Mm -hmm. We're seeing it in the economy, where you're seeing more democratized forms of economic institutions. And we want to see it in government, too, where, where people aren't just going to vote on one day and that's the end of it. They want to part people want to participate in making decisions. And we see that starting to happen in small steps around the country. Uh, there is participatory budgeting going on in Chicago and in New York. And we're pushing for it in Baltimore. Ke Kevin, what does it do to Occupy when we turn on the news and see members of uh, Occupy being arrested for stealing a car, for uh, <laughs> violent <laughs> outbreaks? What, 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 is, what, is that, what is that doing uh, to Thank the you. movement uh, when it is, is almost, it's your thing, do what you want to do, mm -hmm. that there are no, no really any governing policies that everybody is an independent agent, mm -hmm. uh, how, how, how does that affect uh, the progress of the philosophy of Occupy? No, that's not, we're not, we're not advocating car stealing. Uh, at Occupy <laughs> Freedom Plaza, we actually have principles that people have to sign on to in order to be part of the community. Non-violence, non-property destruction, even, even name calling. And we also have principles that require people to participate. Now, the problems you see at the Occupies are the problems society has. Mm -hmm. We're not the cause of homelessness. Mm -hmm. We're not the cause of poverty. We're not the cause of crime. Mm -hmm. uh, just because we're in public and being seen, people may see it more. In fact, we may be highlighting those problems more, and people want to see those problems. Joy, there are some who contend that a lot of the participants of Occupy are really just the homeless population and vagrants and people who have mental uh, challenges, and it's just a few uh, lawyers like Kevin in the background <laughs> pulling the strings, uh, but it's really not everyday working people. What, what would you say to that? I would say that there is a vagrant population there, and they're just as helpful as the non-vagrant population, as the non-homeless population. Um, it's, it's been incredible to see people work together and come together as a community after only knowing someone for a month. Like, I, I've worked with people for a year and haven't been as close with some of the people that I've worked mm -hmm. with. And this is, it doesn't matter if they are a lawyer, it doesn't matter if they're the owner of two, you know, departments in their big conglomerate building. Like, you know, it's just, it's, it's every walk of life contributing to some, a cause that we are really passionate about and we feel that it, we can't really lay down on this one. So, Senator, some uh, people are really having an issue, particularly within uh, the black community and the civil rights guard, uh, is where were these protests, sit-ins, rallies when Bush was here? Why, why are we doing this now under a black president uh, who didn't cause these problems but has inherited these problems? How do we address this uh, to those who have uh, interpreted Occupy as an anti-Obama movement? I, I think that it's up to us and incumbent upon us in, in the black community to say what has happened is that it's manifested. This, these problems have always existed, but the last the past six years, they manifested themselves even more. For example, in the African American community, we have lost more wealth over six years than we have in any other time wow. since slavery. Any other period mm -hmm. since slavery, we have lost more wealth. So I think it's because we're beginning to feel it. We know that this didn't happen under Obama. In fact, it's been happening for decades. It's now come to a place where people have said it's intolerable. Yes. We cannot, we, we can't take this anymore. And I think that what, what, what the point that I'm making is that the, the community that I represent, they're saying, listen, we've worked hard and we've got no homes. 
We've gone to school. We have no jobs. Our children are graduating, getting a certificate of completion that now sets them up forever for doom. Wow. So I think now that it's reaching and that it's been manifested, people in, in our communities, people are saying, I don't care what color you are, white, black, you know, Latino, we've got to come together because that 99% of those who have absolutely no hope and no dreams, but they're coming together to fight. I, on the Obama tip, I think that actually is important that it came up under Obama because Obama was a very popular candidate. He was incredibly popular. You were talking about money and politics. Right. He was getting small donations from all over the country. Right. He was running on populist themes. Uh, he was he was a president of hope. And it's relevant that all this happened because a lot of people were feel betrayed by Obama. Because Obama wasn't a candidate. He was a candidate for change. He's not the president of change. He's kept a lot of Bush policies intact. He kept the economic team intact. It's just handing over the country, shoveling money into the banks. So well, all, all, well of this, think, all of this is really relevant. I think relevant. you also don't have to, have to realize He's one man having to work with a Senate and a Congress that yeah. basically didn't change. I'm just saying, that's, 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 that's the key. That's the key to understand. But we're all we're criticizing the, the system. Right. Mm -hmm. We are, you know, if you put it on, I, I have criticism of Obama, mm -hmm. I have criticism of Gingrich, I have criticism of McCain. There's lots of criticism all around. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, the system is what's curved. We started our, our, our event, we call it Stop the Machine, mm -hmm. Create a New World. The machine is the mm -hmm. corporatist militarist government that dominates the way things are done in Washington, D.C. We want that machine stopped so we can build a but more new world that we want. No, and and I, I want, you to, billion, want you to hear in the aggregate all of what it is that we're dealing with. Dr. Muse is a pastor. I'm a pastor. If I'm standing up before my congregation on Sunday, mm -hmm. what am I saying is the issue? Oftentimes, the Occupy has been compared to civil rights. That's and in the civil rights issue, I could see the focus was integration. That we wanted to get mm -hmm. off the signs that said blacks mm -hmm. only or whites sure. only. And that, if I get up on Sunday, I get up on Sunday, I'm, we are moving towards what goal? We see integration and civil rights yes. affected housing, yes. transit, schools, issue after issue after issue. Ending corporate rule affects issue after issue. Health care, uh, jo uh, jo job mm -hmm. security, education. education, collective bargaining. You, you pick the issue. Corporate rule has destroyed it. If we're making occupies modded in a fifth grader and a bumper sticker. At the end of the day, at the end of or the back of my GMC Shift truck. Shift power to the American people. That's Amen. what I'm asking you. Shift power to the American people. And that's what we're talking about when we're talking about the youth jail. And right. I enjoy talking about this, but we're saying, what are our social priorities? If we're building this youth jail now and we're not building schools, then what is Baltimore and what is America going to look like in 20 years when we disinvested from things that are important to all of us and invested in things that, that are penal. You're tuned in to dinner with Dr. Bryant. The best is yet to come, and we haven't even had any chicken. I need you please not to turn the dial. Amen. Dinner with Dr. Bryant is right here in your living room. Welcome back to Dinner with Dr. Bryant. I'm in Hyattsville, Maryland at Carolina Kitchen. I'm so glad that you could have a seat at our table. We're discussing Occupy Wall Street all the way to Main Street and it's coming down your street. Some of our guests today, they have very passionate, passionate uh, opinions about Occupy uh, and it's absolutely enthralling. I need you to text somebody, Twitter somebody, Facebook somebody, tell them to turn on their television now. Hopefully the 99% have paid their cable bill and are able to see it on tonight. Just before we start eating, because I know once this food gets out here, it's gonna be hard for us to move forward. I want to ask you a critical question. We're in the middle of uh, one of the most critical elections uh, of our country's history in terms of direction uh, and leadership. Whoever is going to be the next president, their top two agendas should be what? Democratize, <laughs> democratize America, get corporations out of government, uh, initiate campaign finance reform that effectively does get corporations and three. big money. Two. Oh. <laughs> I think I, 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 before you get there, people are saying, I need to know something's happening now. Yes. They need jobs. They need security and homes that they have worked for. That's the American dream. The American dream, no matter how we minimize it, it is a part of this whole dynamic, right? It is, if I work, and if I do right, I'm in a country with an Ameri with, that says I have a right to the American dream. Look, we have another four million homes about to be foreclosed on. 
just in the next quarter alone. Really? Once, yes. yes. Oh, yeah. And so yes. once you get four million in the next four quarter, four million in the next quarter that we, that now this that slips are going out. You're saying like places. in the next three months. That's correct. Before Easter. That is absolutely correct. And now, wow. So that is the more imminent problem that people are saying. I need a home. I need a job. Now we can work together on these issues, these larger issues that are just as important. As now, as it is now, people are saying, whoever comes in, you've got to deal with this this American dream. You've got to deal with how do we get that back on track? Because it's clear America is on the wrong track. Mm -hmm. It is clear. We have to now be willing to address the right issues. So it's, that it's we start. it sounds like we're really uh, in a state of emergency. We are in state Absolutely. Of emergency. Uh, and I think it's taking America a moment to really realize it because we're so used to being on top even mm -hmm. if it was in our minds mm -hmm. yes. uh, <laughs> that, that we don't, haven't dealt with this new reality. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, I really I am concerned on how do we sound the alarm uh, because the statistic that the, the senator uh, is saying really hasn't reverberated. I think uh, there's an inner circle that realizes it uh, but I, I, I think that we're still moving forward. You know, when what, you look what, at what, how what? packed the malls were over Christmas. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. You see uh, people are, are, are shooting uh, and killing, um, not in a soup line, but over Air Jordans. Uh, so the reality of the new poverty in America, how do we get this message out so that Occupy doesn't look like it's on the fringe, but it's really a meat and potatoes issue of America? Well, I think that people are living these lives and really realizing that they, they're, they're no longer in a situation where their children would be wealthier than they were, where they can be secure in their retirement. And, you know, so I was going to answer your question about what are the two things. Yes. One is, you know, get money out of politics for real. I mean, money really out so we can shift political power to the American people. Two, restart the economy, much the way you're talking about, restart the economy, but restart with a conscience that we want to create a democratized economy. We want to create an economy people have more control of their lives and more influence over the direction of their lives. That's what we want to start doing, and it deals with housing and jobs and all the issues, health care, that, that you were talking about there. Is Occupy Wall, Wall Street the alter ego of the Tea Party? No. No. <laughs> How is it not? I don't even know where to begin on that. Uh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Yeah. I'll tell you we, we get the comparison to that all the time. Yes, um, we do. People are people involved in Occupy. No, have gotten this question: Why are we not the same? Why haven't we come together? There's several different reasons not mm -hmm. to. Right. And I think that that kind of, I don't know, kind of sidetracks the conversation about Occupy. And that's what it's intended to do. Exactly. That's what it's intended to exactly. do. When, whenever you pull aside from the mainstream to say, "Wait a minute, you're not addressing the issues of the people." You, you raised a question earlier. They say it's socialism. Well, that's what they said of the leaders of the civil rights movement. Right. They called them socialism. They called communists, them communists. Yeah. They said everything that they could. Rather than admit that the mainstream is not the mainstream anymore, it's just a few persons who are saying that this mm -hmm. is the mainstream, but the people are saying, no, this is this will not do. Mm -hmm. we, have to, we have to have a revolution. We have, this absolutely is not where we're going. So when you do that, they have to uh, make you look illegitimate. Yes, by, come on, by Carolina, labeling you. Highsville, Maryland. That's how we're doing county, it. My yeah. county, my <laughs> <I'm so laughs> county. Thank you. I'm so grateful that this that this is my county where we have the best food. Thank you. Just take a look. That's it. A uh, uh, critical because all of you all are drifting away from me right now, yeah. looking at crap. What, what did you ask me, by the way? <laughs> I don't even remember what I just asked you, other than how do we solve hunger across Maryland? Uh, I, I, I think be becomes the issue. Yeah. What, what then becomes of Occupy 2.0? Uh, well, now we're, that you're, we're, actually, we're, we're actually in that phase right now. We're mm -hmm. at Freedom Plaza. We're going through a transition, not only because of winter, but because we think this phase of the Occupy needs to evolve. And what we're starting to do is we're moving toward two things. As I said, stop the machine, create a new world. Stopping the machine in, in, in the next year. God um, bless Occupy and everybody that's hungry. Please free. go right here. Yes. yes. I'll, I don't have a place, so you guys can eat while oh. I talk. Yes. <laughs> You're the one percent. You represent the one percent. Oh, you guys got the food? Yes, we got it. Don't bring we, it. We've reversed it. Absolutely. <laughs> no, what we're, planning for the, what we're planning is the American Spring. We're inviting, and as you know, there's, there's a lot of activity going on. Eat, Joy, eat. Uh, yeah. well, now we're very glad, yeah. glad to see the... Uh, yes. Yes, thank you. The uh, you know the, the American the Occupy the Dream movement being part of that uh, yes. in the spring and building the African American communities involvement. I think that's a, a critical ingredient. But we're planning to Occupy Washington D.C. and called Now D.C. National Occupation of Washington D.C. We're inviting all the wow. occupies. March 30th. It's going to go on for weeks. We're inviting people to come down and participate and, and show the breadth 
and the strength of the Occupy movement. So that's one thing we're doing. The second thing we're doing is we're, we're starting a project called Occupy the Economy. I need to, you to pause oh, right there. Oh, that's the most important I, point. I know it. Occupy it all if you can. Please, whatever you do, if you can get to Hyattsville, Maryland, I want oh you to come to God. Carolina Kitchen. It's the absolute mm. best food in the state. They are absolutely five star. You are really hungry. This is only for the 99%. The 1% will not appreciate this but the 99% will really appreciate it. I hope that you will, in fact, keep coming back to this station. We're going to be doing Occupy, uh, no, we're not, Dinner with Dr. Bryant. Uh, every time we come together, it is a wonderful opportunity to come into your home. Please tell somebody this is our first one, but we're going to keep coming back to you with wonderful meals, wonderful conversation, and wonderful people. Whatever you do, please stay hungry. I'm Dr. Bryant, and you just had dinner with me.